Um, the title um, uh, of the acronym is connecting. Uh, is, 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 is the title of this presentation? I'm sorry. Is connecting European regions through innovative transport technologies, but with a particular stress uh, to the technologies in uh, our project. And I'd like to spend the next 20 minutes or so introducing the project uh, to those of you who um, do not uh, perhaps know it so well yet. Um, and um, I promise you, uh, of those in the audience, many of you who are involved in the project, that at the end uh, I will be summarising uh, the state of where we are uh, halfway through the project and um, reaching uh, what I hope will be rather challenging conclusions. Now, for those who don't know it, Sintropha stands a rather cumbrous acronym, but a hopefully accurate one, Sustainable Integrated Tram-Based Transport for Peripheral European Regions. And uh, as um, you'll see, uh, our definition of peripheral is uh, slightly different uh, from uh, that um, used um, by the Commission, uh, because our peripheral regions, if we can just flick back, I'm hopeful we can, but I think it's come on automatically here, um, uh, our five regions uh, are at the, uh, one might say, the peripheries of their um, member states, although they are by no means peripheral within uh, the European Union. Um, but they um, definitely have... Sorry, there is a misprint there that slipped through. That's, of course, Interreg 4B proposal. Sorry about that. Um, these are uh, peripheral regions in Northwest Europe which are poorly served uh, by uh, rail and air links, in particular rail, and have poor, uh, that is, slow or indirect public transport facilities uh, to their main national networks, especially the evolving um, uh, high-speed uh, rail system. Uh, we want in the project to demonstrate the potential of new transport technologies, uh, but in particular, not exclusively, as you'll see, the tram train concept, uh, which was first developed in Germany in Karlsruhe um, 20 years ago, and uh, then in Kassel, uh, one of our partners, um, and what we regard as our mentor region, since they developed very important innovations in uh, transport technology. Um, these peripheral areas um, uh, are, uh, we argue, in danger of peripheralizing further. Um, uh, here are the regions. Um, some of them are within the EU Pentagon, so-called, the central core of the EU, um, uh, uh, such as uh, Nordhessen around uh, uh, Kassel um, uh, and, um, uh, and uh, West Flanders uh, on the uh, coast of Belgium, uh, Valenciennes in France, certainly within the core uh, of Europe, uh, and just on the edge of it, Nijmegen in the Netherlands. The filed coast um, our EU partner is uh, just outside the Pentagon, and you may say these differences are rather subtle, uh, the distances are quite short, but we would argue that you can be really quite peripheral uh, even if, uh, in a geographical sense viewed on the map, uh, you, uh, look quite, you appear to be quite central. Um, uh, we in UCL are the lead partner coordinating uh, the work of the five regional partners, and I'd like to play, pay tribute now to the small team at UCL, uh, which is uh, managing this really rather large EU project with a total budget of some 23 million euros. Um, I've mentioned already uh, Nordhessen, the region, or Kassel, the city, uh, which is, is and was at the beginning our model. Uh, in a way, the germ of the whole idea of Sintrofa. Uh, what's happened in this city right in the middle of Germany, very close uh, uh, to the old Iron Curtain, uh, which came down uh, literally a few kilometers to the east 
um, just a year before the opening of um, the first true German high-speed rail line um, uh, from Würzburg to, uh, and Frankfurt uh, to Berlin and Hanover, or via Hanover. And um, it, this involved uh, relocating the main train station in Kassel um, uh, to accommodate the new high-speed uh, ICE trains and the regional express trains in a new location uh, some um, uh, four kilometres west of the uh, city centre. Uh, and that was important uh, because it left the old train station more or less marooned uh, at the edge of uh, the city centre. And um, then um, the, the um, city and the region adopted uh, the model from Karlsruhe of the tram train, that is, a tram that could run off uh, city street tracks onto the main line uh, railway. And you see here a picture of one arriving at the new Kassel Wilhelmshöhe station. Uh, and um, very importantly for us, uh, on one particular line, uh, because of a, a particular um, uh, issue with a tunnel, um, very difficult for them, but rather fortunate, we feel, for us, um, uh, it's this uh, line here. Um, uh, they had to ask Alstom, the tram manufacturers, to develop a diesel hybrid uh, tram. Uh, and uh, finally, um, on, uh, in August 07, uh, nearly four years ago, uh, the whole system opened, um, uh, uh, providing an integrated network of tram trains uh, for the entire region. Um, now, uh, a few pictures. Um, here is the main street, the main uh, shopping street of uh, Kassel, uh, with a blue city tram. Um, and, uh, but I'd ask you to look at the um, elegant uh, post here that shows you the routes. There are the uh, city trams here, but up here are the regional trams, uh, and um, these um, uh, are integrated in the city centre. Another picture in the opposite direction, and here you see the silver regional tram. And this is the uh, interesting technology. Um, and, whoops, sorry, gone too fast. Um, and if you take one of these uh, regional trams, uh, you go around a couple of corners, and within about two minutes, you are going down this ramp into a tunnel uh, under the old um, city centre train station. And here we are coming up. Uh, on the other side of the tunnel into this station. And um, there, sorry, going too fast again, um, uh, the tram stops briefly um, to change power. And uh, most of these trams uh, change power from uh, um, city tram electricity at 750 volts DC uh, to um, uh, main line electricity which in Germany is, I always get this wrong, 16 and two-thirds, isn't it, kilovolts. Kilo, uh, um, um, uh, but the particular tram we're interested in here uh, takes the pantograph down and switches on a diesel motor, and within a very few minutes, uh, it comes out of the train station here on its own power, no longer under the wires, and before very long, it's going into the country along a single track, um, uh, on its diesel power. Um, and um, very importantly, this um, uh, branch, the Volkswagen, like other branches, is based on the principle of interoperation uh, with uh, regular trains uh, 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 on the heavy rail system, diesel operated also, of course, uh, and here you see a passing loop around one half of the way on the line with a tram waiting for a train. And this principle of interoperation, which was developed first in Karlsruhe and then elaborated in Kassel, is at the heart of the German tram-train concept. And it's the one that, uh, when we started Sintrofa, we wanted to see whether we could um, uh, emulate in other uh, EU member states. Here's the train coming into the terminus station. 
the passengers, nearly all school students, coming out because it's 3.30 in the afternoon, and the tram uh, just um, leaving again uh, for the centre of Kassel. Now, this journey totally takes about half an hour. A very impressive system. Uh, and um, our Kassel partners are continuing to work uh, within Sintrofa on uh, fine-tuning uh, certain aspects of the system, in particular marketing uh, the system, uh, both to passengers uh, to attract them from their cars and also to developers in order to build up development potential around key stations. They're also working on uh, seamless web information systems, particularly trying to integrate on-vehicle and off-vehicle systems um, uh, so that um, you could, um, uh, for instance, with your um, mobile phone, your smartphone, get a constant flow of information about what's happening if you're on a uh, high-speed intercity train. Uh, you might hear that there's a problem uh, when you get out at the Wilhelmshöhe station, so you'd be able to make an alternative plan, for instance. And this, we think, is a terribly important aspect of Sintrofa um, uh, because it's applicable um, not only within our project but uh, in many other uh, transport projects. Uh, they're also working, importantly, on the integration of stations and local development. And it's important that these trams are rightly called regional trams and they serve a wide uh, mainly quite rural region, as you sense from the pictures. They go through open countryside with uh, small towns or villages at the stations. And this provides a very interesting way of extending the accessibility that Castle gets from the ICE service out into the surrounding region. Uh, and it can provide a model for local regional development extending quite far out uh, perhaps uh, 20, 30 kilometres, or even farther actually in some uh, one line of the Car uh, Karlsruhe system, far out into the surrounding countryside. So here the tram train becomes a crucial instrument of regional development. And uh, our first idea in, in developing Sintrofa uh, was actually to apply this concept uh, to what is called the filed coast of Lancashire around the seaside resort of Blackpool. Um, uh, Blackpool is, is uh, obviously out on the coast. It is only around uh, 30 kilometres uh, from our high-speed um, train, not quite as high-speed as some, but the Pendolino service from London to Glasgow, uh, which stops at Preston around 30 kilometres inland. Uh, and it has two railway stations, the main north station, um, you see here, uh, and this line is shortly to be electrified, and the south station here, which, as you'll see in a minute, is a, a slightly problematic line. Uh, in, in fact, one could say a very peripheral piece of railway. But most important of all, uh, Blackpool has its famous tramway, uh, the, and, the, the, uh, and we'll see this in a minute. Here is a train on the Blackpool South line, diesel train, this is at the terminus Blackpool South, very outmoded, unfortunately. Uh, this is a relatively new train, but many of them are very old, and the whole quality of the service is really rather substandard. But running parallel to that line, and only a few hundred metres from it, it is this remarkable tramway, the oldest in the UK, the only one to operate continuously for 126 years. It celebrated its 125th birthday last year, having opened originally in 1885. And it's now undergoing a massive £110 million upgrade with new Bombardier trams, which will be arriving in the town in a couple of months and will be progressively tested, tested and commissioned. And the whole new system is due to open and will open in uh, April next year. 
Now, therefore, the uh, uh, original idea in Sintrofa, the core in some ways of the proposal, uh, was to uh, bring Castle to Blackpool uh, by uh, linking the promenade tramway uh, near its southern, or at its southern terminus, uh, to the parallel South Fylde line. Here the tramway ends, here is the South Fylde line. Uh, and also to create a link uh, to the uh, adjacent Blackpool Airport, uh, which is a regional airport, um, important to the town's economy, uh, but um, uh, focusing on uh, low-cost uh, airline operation. Um, and one big question for adapting Castle to Blackpool was whether this South Fylde line uh, should uh, operate exclusively tram train vehicles or uh, should interoperate with the existing heavy rail service. At a late stage in the development of the project, um, we also agreed to include the main line into Blackpool at the North Station because there is a major regeneration uh, project uh, due to start here. Uh, and um, it, there, the town has an ambition to extend the tram uh, to the station, uh, but in addition there is a potential um, uh, to alternatively or additionally uh, run tram train service uh, through this station and onto what would be an electrified line, so that the South Fylde line would be a Wolfhagen-type uh, um, uh, electric diesel hybrid, uh, whereas the North Station variant could be a, a um, tram electricity um, to uh, uh, main line electricity transfer at the North Station. Our next partner is uh, West Flanders, the uh, area on the Belgian coast um, uh, between Canocha uh, near the Dutch border and uh, De Panne uh, near the French border. Uh, which has really one of the most remarkable uh, tram services in Europe, a 70-kilometre uh, uh, coast tram, uh, recently modernised with very nice trams and very handsome infrastructure, uh, which is a tremendous commercial success with the visitors and in some ways is a model for what the upgraded uh, Blackpool tram service uh, should and could be. By the way, importantly, as some of you will already have spotted, um, uh, this is a narrow gauge, meter gauge system, uh, and that has uh, some interesting implications. The uh, idea here is uh, to uh, build a new extension inland uh, from this place here, Coxada, in past an old military airport, uh, and there to join uh, an existing branch railway line, which is coming up from Brussels and terminates just here at De Panna, which is the existing terminus of the line. In fact, that last picture was taken at De Panna, and um, uh, you could just see, I'll just go back, if you peer to the right of the tram, you will just see uh, a Belgian national train ready to leave. Uh, but the idea here is to create new interchanges uh, running the trams through the open countryside uh, to a, a, a new interchanges, um, uh, in fact two interchange stations, and there to create major regeneration opportunities around the new interchange stations. So the emphasis of our West Flanders partner is very much on interchange. Uh, our next partner, Valenciennes, uh, at the northeast border of France, close to Lille and very close to the Belgian border, already has one tram line and is just due to start work on a second. Uh, and it's that second line that interests us because here the authority is proposing a novel technology which is 30 kilometres of single track tramway, therefore relatively r inexpensive, um, uh, very economic, but with the necessity to, for the trams to pass at passing loops. 
And the, this passing loop technology is completely new, completely novel, and it constitutes the novel, therefore, technological innovation which is to be tested uh, in uh, the uh, Valenciennes partners' work. Um, there are two phases of construction of this second line. Um, the first of these... Um, sorry, if we go back a moment, we seem to have lost a map. There it is, uh, going too fast. Um, the first phase, which will just start construction in September, will come from the north here, near the Belgian border, with a shuttle bus connection, down through the centre of the city, where it will join the existing Line 1, go through here, um, through the city centre, and then take off in this direction to the east. Uh, what you can't see on this map, it doesn't go quite far enough, is here's the Belgian border again, and this line of the tram is intended to go across the border for 800 metres into Belgium uh, to the uh, Belgian uh, National Railway Station uh, at, um, uh, uh, at Kievran. Uh, this is the present abandoned line uh, which will have to be restored, and here is the Kievran station. Importantly, because of Valenciennes uh, peripheral position in France, um, it, the relations are potentially as good as or even better than um, the, the co existing connection to Lille if they go through French-speaking Belgium into Brussels. So this would provide um, additional economic opportunities for the citizens of this old industrial town and region in this old coalfield area of France uh, to find uh, new uh, work opportunities and uh, also service opportunities in the Brussels region by a very easy connection to the um, Belgian National Railways. Uh, our uh, next partner is in the Netherlands, uh, and this is yet another cross-boundary line proposal. This is to join the city of Nijmegen at the far eastern uh, side of the Netherlands uh, to uh, the German city of Kleve in Nordrhein-Westfalen by restoring a completely disused rail line uh, across the border. I should say not completely disused because we had the great pleasure a couple of months ago uh, of, um, at the workshop of riding part of this line ourselves, pedalling along it because they have a wonderful tourist attraction which is a pedal train, uh, which I presume will unfortunately be lost when the trams come in. At any rate, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, went too far, that's an old map showing uh, how the railway once ran from Nijmegen to Klever. Um, here is uh, the ex abandoned line in the uh, middle, uh, about midway uh, between, um, uh, between Nijmegen and Klever. And um, the feasibility study here is finished um, uh, very recently. Uh, this shows the proposal for the tram to cross the road at exactly the point you've just seen, that abandoned stretch of, uh, of railway. Uh, it said that the best possibility is a tram, a regional tram, no interoperation, not a train, not a tram train, but a tram running on and connecting to uh, the uh, German railways at the Klever station for onward transit on the stopping train that goes down to Dusseldorf. And importantly, they looked in this study at the potential for serving the uh, 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 regional airport, mainly low-cost airlines again, Weizer or Niederrhein, uh, just on the German side of the border, south of Kleber, but they've decided that this isn't going to uh, stack up uh, as a commercial prospect, so it's been rejected. Uh, there is a great deal of support in the Netherlands now. There is the money there for m further studies that will take this further towards construction, and we are very anxious to find the additional money uh, to support our Dutch partners. Now, I now come on to the last part of the, uh, this uh, presentation, where I'm going to try to sum up on the key issues uh, at the, which have come out in the first two years of our work. As you can imagine, these are interoperation or track sharing with heavy rail, motive power, 
um, whether there is any alternative to uh, the DC-AC um, hybrid that was developed in uh, Karlsruhe and now widely used in Kassel and elsewhere. Thirdly, the relation to the main hub that connects this region to the wider world. And uh, next, the potential to trigger either brownfield regeneration uh, or new development. And finally, uh, the point just raised, the potential to service regional airports. Let me go through this very quickly in turn. Interoperational track sharing. As you've seen, Kassel and earlier Karlsruhe pioneered interoperation, even uh, originally in Karlsruhe sharing with high-speed ICE trains. But Nijmegen, as you've just seen, has rejected interoperation as too complex. Uh, and in West Flanders and Valenciennes, it hasn't been even an option. Uh, in West Flanders, as you've seen, the problem is that the tram is a meter gauge tram, whereas, of course, the Belgian railways are standard European 1.435 meter gauge. And in Valenciennes, the problem is that so far, the SNCF reject any possibility of running trams over their railway, so it's not an allowable option. In Fylde Coast, it still is very much an option along the South Fylde Line. Uh, it, we're waiting uh, uh, for, eagerly for the consultant's report, expected in about a month's time. And by the way, the consultants will be on the panel uh, in this afternoon's session. Uh, but interoperation there would be absolutely essential if the tram extension is to uh, serve the purpose of connecting to the regional hub uh, at Preston. Secondly, motive power. You've seen the unique uh, Nord Hessen diesel vehicle. But other partners have rejected hybrid technology, finding it too complex. And it, it seems that they didn't even consider it uh, because. Uh, throughout most of uh, the EU, uh, the standard is uh, electrified railways. So why would you even consider uh, a de something as odd as a diesel variant, uh, particularly as it doesn't correspond to the sustainability um, uh, uh, objectives uh, as now uh, set out in EU transport policy? Further, um, we now know from our North Hessen friends that they probably wouldn't even consider the option now because there would be a different way of getting that tram through that funny tunnel. Um, uh, we have here in the UK um, a, a, a national trial of tram train technology going on in Yorkshire around Sheffield and Tim Kendall is in the audience this morning. Uh, but um, what has happened there is that they originally started with the objective, like us in, in Blackpool, of bringing in the, uh, the Castle diesel tram, only to find out that the EU, EU had uh, just brought in new emissions regulations that make the Castle diesel motor non-conforming. So the problem is that you have to develop a completely new kind of conforming tram. This is very expensive because it's a one-off prototype for a very short order of only five trams, Tim, in, in, in your trial, and it just didn't prove possible. So the uh, national trial has had to switch away from diesel to as an all-DC version. But it still remains a real question <coughs> for the South Fylde line in Blackpool, because this will remain non-electrified even after the main line into North Station um, <coughs> it, um, is electrified. And this is very relevant as a problem to us in the UK because our government has committed to the very radical target of an 80% carbon reduction target by 2050, which is the most radical of any European member state. And so this raises the, the, the question, <coughs> excuse me, which we, we shall have to examine in um, the next two years of the study, of whether there is um, any other technology out there, uh, and the technology, as you all know, is evolving very rapidly, um, which could actually take the place of the diesel hybrid. And I can't resist showing you a short video clip uh, uh, of, a, um, uh, of a technology which some of you might have seen uh, if you were at the Shanghai Expo last year uh, and maybe even ridden on this bus 
um, which is a, a, a Chinese technology, a supercapacitator bus that picks electricity up from that pantograph among the, above the vehicle uh, whenever it stops at a bus stop. And then that is sufficient in terms of feeding the batteries uh, to uh, allow it to go on to the next stop. Now, this is relatively easy for bus technology um, uh, because there are frequent stops. Uh, for tram train technology, going across open countryside, there are obviously real limitations with this technology, but we have to ask ourselves whether uh, a technology like this, or perhaps some other, could be developed uh, here in Europe uh, to serve the needs uh, of non-electrified uh, rail lines. Um, and um, the next point is the relationship to the key regional hub in each system. Uh, in, in Kassel, as you've seen, the hub station, which is Wilhelmshöhe, is right in the centre of the tram train network, no problem there. Um, in uh, Nijmegen, the so-called uh, oil region, um, the, um, that actually is better connected um, uh, th through, um, uh, th through uh, the Claver hub. But for inter-regional connections, for instance to Dusseldorf, you wouldn't want to take that slow train. You would actually go to the uh, other half of the Arnhem-Nijmegen regions, to the Arnhem station, from which uh, a German ICE train will take you very rapidly to Dusseldorf and beyond. In West Flanders, the proposed hub at Ferna would offer and we'll, uh, we'll continue to offer, unless there's a radical change, a relatively slow connection to the metropolitan centre of Brussels compared with the existing Ostend hub on the um, existing uh, coast tram. So an issue there. Um, potential for development and regeneration varies hugely. Um, in West Flanders, uh, where they've uh, achieved an amazingly good uh, regeneration and development all along the coast. It's a model for any uh, seaside region looking for regeneration, such as Blackpool. Uh, but the aim now is to tr trigger new regeneration around the slightly sleepier towns inland through uh, the uh, new hubs. In Nijmegen, uh, there's a very important aspect to connect with a very large uh, campus, uh, higher education, further education, uh, uh, about four kilometres uh, south of the city centre, but also to serve huge new housing developments between Nijmegen and Arnhem, part of the huge Dutch National Phoenix programme that are effectively bypassed by the existing heavy rail link. In the Fylde Coast, um, it should be possible to use an extension uh, of the new tram along tram trains principles uh, to generate development at new points and indeed regeneration of older, rather run-down uh, areas in the resort itself uh, around the uh, new uh, uh, line. The relation to the regional airport, it, this is perhaps the most surprising, I think, for us. Uh, highlighted by Nijmegen, that the airport's concerned are small regional operations depending very much on low-cost traffic. Their passengers come from a wide area around with dispersed origins. They mainly come by car. Public transport doesn't suit them well. And finally, the operators themselves are really squeezed by the bargains they've made with operators like Ryanair, are really dependent on parking revenues, so they don't want to see the tram arrive, uh, uh, as they discovered in Nijmegen. Also, we have to face the fact that rising fuel costs are going to have a big impact on low-cost operations, and you've probably seen uh, only yesterday the announcement that Ryanair are going to be pushing up their fares uh, because of this and even cutting out routes during the winter. But this remains for us uh, an open question, and again, we'll be very interested to see uh, what uh, the consultants say in relation to Blackpool. There, here, then, is a summary of the conclusions I've been giving you. I don't propose to go uh, through uh, them now. Uh, it will be available um, uh, 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 for those who need it on our website, where these presentations will all be uh, uploaded. 
and importantly, uh, the file coast shows a row of question marks because we still don't have the critical consultants report. But perhaps they'll give us a uh, short insight in tomorrow afternoon's session. So con key conclusions, the analysis is still in progress, especially the file coast. The preliminary conclusions are quite strong. Interoperation, very mixed views, and I have to say no huge enthusiasm. Motive power, little enthusiasm for the diesel hybrid. Is it on the way out or will an alternative be found? Relationship to the regional hub, absolutely crucial, but the geography does vary from region to region. Um, development uh, and regeneration, again the geography varies, but considerable potential uh, for regeneration. Um, uh, the regional airport link, a present poor prospect, but let us see uh, what the consultants say in Blackpool. We will develop these uh, as ongoing um, uh, project reports uh, of our project. They're just beginning to appear now. The first ones will be appearing in the next few weeks. And we hope that these will provide important outputs and a guidance for policymakers and decision takers across the entire EU. And we hope to report, of course, the final conclusions of our study in two years' time at our um, a final conference. So here are what uh, the things we're all, our partners are all doing, uh, all very exciting, uh, including not merely the individual uh, projects, but the so-called work packages, uh, which are dealing with integrative aspects, such as how decisions on investments are made, how investments are evaluated, how to develop interchange facilities and facilitate regeneration, and how to promote the marketing of um, trams and tram train systems, which uh, the, our different partners are developing. And finally, and very excitingly, just starting, is Synaptic, uh, which is a further development onward from Syntrofa, but let's wait for that uh, until the end of the afternoon, when I'll come back and show you a few more slides. Thank you very much, and now we go into a Q&A session.